Hello, so today we are going to talk about abnormal accruals in a modified Jones model. There are a lot of variations in the Jones model originally published in 1991. You may already know that this is a model used to estimate abnormal accruals or accruals that are not based on accounting fundamentals. In other words, these are accruals done through management's discretion. That is why abnormal accruals are also called discretionary accruals. Because these are discretionary, they are often used to measure the level of earnings management. We are only going to focus on one of these models, which we call the modified Jones model. And that model is specified as follows where TACC refers to the total accruals, which we are going to calculate from the very basic formula net income less cash flow from operations. There are a lot of other ways to calculate TACC, but we are only going to use the simplest one. We also have A, which is the Lab total asset refers to the assets from the preceding year. We have REV for revenues, the gross revenues, REC for the gross receivables, PE for the property planning equipment, gross. We have the ROA for return assets, and we have the alpha, of course, those are the coefficients, and the E epsilon for the error term. Now, before we go to the SPSS software, we have to check our data. Assuming that we want to estimate the normal accruals of firms for eight years from 2009 to 2016, because we also need data for land assets as well as for revenues and receivables, we also require the data from the preceding year, 2008. Depends on how you want to define your variables, but here is how we will do it in the simplest possible way. For example, we will need net income or NI. Many would use the operating income or earnings before extraordinary items to represent the net income. But here we're going to use a very simple bottom line, the net profit. Um, net cash from operating activities for CFO or cash flow from operations, total revenues for REV or REV, uh, accounts receivable for the REV, and because our source of the data does not have the gross PPE, &E, we're going to manually calculate it by adding accumulated depreciation to the net PPE, and e, which is the one available in the database, and we have total assets for A. And because we know that TACC is net income less cash flow from operations, so we can just simply calculate this by deducting CFO from NI in our software. And same with the return assets, which is net income divided by the assets. So this are all the data we need. There are seven variables. One, two, seven. Now let's move to the Excel file. We have to make sure that all the variables that were identified in a model are present. Here is what you would normally see when you uh, download a data set from a database. This one is from Bureau of Antique, which was recently acquired by Moody's. So as you can see in here, we have net profit for nine years, including the lag assets, cash flow from operations, and so on. Now we are ready to import the data to SPSS. From SPSS, select File, Open, Data. Look for the location of the Excel file, but notice down here that the default type is an SPSS file. So we need to change this to Excel, then find your file, click Open, in the next dialog box, make sure that this box is checked because we know that the first row of our Excel file refers to the variable names. Also select the appropriate spreadsheet and then click OK. This is what will pop up after. One of the first things we need to do once import is done is to restructure the data to prepare it for analysis. The data that we just imported is in the 
wide form, which is not what we need.